So the, the logic for studying cognitive and language systems using this kind of more approach makes sense. Um, but since you've argued that uh, language capacity is part of the genetic endowment, you could apply it to other biological systems as well. It'd be immune systems, circulatory systems. Yeah, certainly, I think it's very so similar. On. You so could say the same thing about the study of the immune system. It might even be simpler, in fact, to do it for those systems than for cognition. Though you'd expect different answers. I mean, you could do it for the digestive system. I mean, suppose somebody's uh, studying the digestive system. Well, they're not going to study uh, what happens when you have stomach flu or when you've just eaten a Big Mac or something. I mean, if you're trying to, let's go back to taking pictures of what's outside the window. One way of studying the digestive system is just take all data you can find about what digestive systems do under any circumstances, uh, toss the data into a computer, uh, do statistical analysis. You get something, you know, but it's not going to be what any biologist would do. They want to abstract away at the beginning, very beginning, abstract away from what are presumed, maybe wrongly, you can always be wrong, but what are presumed to be irrelevant uh, uh, variables, like do you have stomach flu? But that's precisely uh, what the biologists are doing. They're taking the sick people with the sick digestive system, comparing it to the normals, and measuring these models. That may be problems. one, that's, they're doing at an advanced stage. The study of the digestive system, they already understand a lot about the study of the digestive system before they even right. compare them. Otherwise, you wouldn't know what to compare. And why is one sick and one isn't, you know? I mean, even the concept... They're relying on statistical analysis mm. to pick out the features that discriminate. I mean, well, many, many people take this approach. It's highly fundable because you're claiming to study sick people. That may be the way to fund things, yeah. yeah. Like, maybe the way to, uh, you know, fund a study of languages to say, maybe help cure autism or something. Right. But that's a different question, you know. But, but the logic of the search is to try to, you begin by studying the system abstracted from what you plausibly take to be irrelevant intrusions. See if you can find its basic nature. Then ask, well, what happens when I bring in some of this other stuff, like stomach flu? It, it still seems like there's a, a difficulty in applying more to these kinds of systems in the sense that if you ask, well, what is the computational problem that the brain is solving, we have kind of an answer. It's sort of like a computer. But if you ask, what is the computational problem that's being solved by the lung, that's very difficult to even think about because it's, it, it's not obviously an information processing no. kind of problem. But there's no reason to assume that uh, all of biology is computational. There may be a reason to assume that cognition is. Uh, and in fact, that's, you know, Gallistel's not saying that Everything in the body ought to be studied by finding, you know, read-write address units. Like, but it just seems contrary to any evolutionary intuition. These systems evolved together using many of, reusing many of the same parts, no, same molecules, pathways, and so no, cells are computing things. Yeah, but they're um, but you don't you don't study the lung by asking what cells compute. Um, the you study you study the immune system and the visual system. But you're not going to expect to find the same answers. This, uh, uh, an organism is a highly modular system, has a lot of complex subsystems, which are more or less internally integrated, not and interact with one another, and they ha they operate by different principles. I mean, the biology is highly modular. Uh, you, you don't assume it's just one big mess all acting the same way. No, sure, but I'm, I'm saying that you would apply the same approach to study no, each of the modules. The well, more, same um, well, not necessarily, not if the modules are different. So some of the modules may be computational, others may not be. So what is the, what, what would you think would be a, an adequate theory that is explanatory rather than just predicting data the statistical way? What would be an adequate scientific theory of these systems that are probably not computing systems? Can we even understand them? Sure. I mean, you can you understand a lot about, uh, um, say, what makes an embryo turn into a, a chicken rather than a mouse, let's say. But uh, it's a very intricate system, involves all kind of chemical interactions, all sorts of other things. In fact, even the nematode, it's by no means obviously true. In fact, there's some reports from the study here which argue that it's not true, that it's just a matter of a kind of a neural net. Uh, that they're also, you have to look at uh, 
uh, complex chemical interactions, for example, which take place in the brain, in the nervous system. So you, you have to look at each system on its own. Now, these chemical interactions may not be related to how your arithmetical capacity works. They probably aren't. But uh, they might very well be uh, related to whether you decide to raise your arm or lower it, let's see. Though if you study the chemical interactions, it might lead you in, in what you call the kind of just a redescription of the phenomena. Or an explanation. Because but maybe that's directly involved, crucially involved. But if you explain it in terms of chemical X has to be turned on, gene X has to be turned on, you've not really explained how sex determination is done. You've simply found a switch and you've hit that switch. But, and, um, so I, but then you look further and find out what makes this gene uh, do such and such uh, under these circumstances and do something else under different circumstances. And it's, uh, you know. But if genes are not the right level of abstraction, you then you'll get the wrong, yeah. then you won't get the right answer. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, it, and maybe they're not. I mean, for example, it's notoriously difficult to try to account for how an organism arises from a genome. There's all kind of production going on in the cells, you know, which you have to figure out somehow. So, and sure, you might be looking at, if you just look at uh, a, a gene action, you may not be at the right level of, of abstraction. You never know. That's what you try to study. I see. But I don't think there's any uh, algorithm for answering those questions. You know, try. <laughs> you have to try.